Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Jill and I've been invited along this afternoon. Uh, I really want to find out about how do people living with disabilities, uh, epilepsy, autism or any type of condition, how it affects their daily life. Hello, my name's Julie. I do have epilepsy and I've had uh, the condition for about 40 years now. Hello, my name is Fred Kitteren. I have epilepsy since the year 2011. I run an organization that is called Kitteren Epilepsy Foundation. Thank you so much. Hi, Fred. <laughs> it's lovely that you could join us. So, can you actually start? Whereabouts in Kenya do you live? I live, I live some 30 kilometers from the capital city. Have you lost Fred now? Oh, we lost Fred. Oh, that's fine. We're going back. Okay. And uh, that's where we have our organisation. Yes. So the Kisserum Epilepsy Foundation, isn't it? That that's what you set up. Um, in what yes. year? What year? How long? It was set up in 12th December, 2016. And Fred, can we ask? Do you have epilepsy? Yourself? Yes, I have epilepsy myself. Okay. Since the year 2011, while I was working in Iraq, that's when I started getting the problems, and uh, it was when I was diagnosed to have epilepsy. And how was it diagnosed as epilepsy? The first time uh, they did a CT scan, then they did an MRI scan, and eventually an EEG is the one that was be able to was able to detect my epilepsy. Yeah. So I, I believe, yes, you said you were working out in Iraq, and, you know, which is a pretty hot country, isn't it? Um, so what were you doing while you were working? And I was working as a pastry chef, and uh, I was working with, uh, with British Petroleum, and uh, oh. hmm. from there, it is when now I started experiencing the seizures and all that, until now I was diagnosed. And what was their first reaction? when you started having these dizziness or these spells, how, how did they relate? How did they behave towards you, your, your employer? Uh, first of all, they were shocked and mm. uh, I was also shocked. Mm. So I couldn't believe because uh, all those years I was living, it came a while I was, uh, I was 28, 28 years. So I, I, I never accepted the, the fact, but when I came home and I went to the hospital, it is when now that I realize now I am sick, I have to live, live a clean yeah. life. Yeah. How did your family react when you got the diagnosis of epilepsy? Uh, my mother, my mother, you know, she's a very prayerful lady. She, she, took, it, she took it with a lot of grief because mm. at that time I, I was really earning a lot of money in Iraq. So you can imagine now you are... You are, you are again jobless. So people were shocked. But my aunts were, were really saying that I have demons or people are, were possessing me with demons. So it was a lot of shenanigans. I so, okay, I heard you say possessing demons. So is that right? Is that what people thought, that you were possessed in some way? Yes, a, a lot of people here still think that if you have epilepsy, you are either with demons or... You, somebody bewitched you. So there's a, there's a very big misconception here. And you said you were jobless, so that's obviously BP said, okay, mm. we don't need you anymore, somehow. No, 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 when, when, uh, when I came home, when I came home, I took my drugs and I went still back, I, I went still to work in Iraq. But it reached a time now I had to, because of the heat and also because oh, okay. of, I also yeah. wanted to do something else because you know, the, yeah. Iraq is a very dangerous place. Mm. <laughs> yes. So, and, so. And he was, no, God, I was yes. going to say, so it's British Petroleum then were actually very supportive towards you. 
Being yes. an international company, they would have yeah. heard about epilepsy, I would have imagined, yes. wouldn't they? Yes. And what about um, attitudes in general in Kenya? How are they? How would you describe them? Uh, in Kenya, in Kenya, still people people with epilepsy are living a very very bad life because mm. number one, lack of drugs, lack of acceptance. The family members don't accept that maybe you are sick or mm. you have been diagnosed. They, some say you are bewitched and you can't. You are of no use. So people with epilepsy really suffer and some of mm. them also go into depression. Well, I suppose because it's a hidden condition, isn't it? Because from the outside, everybody looks perfectly normal. And that's yes. probably Thank why, you why isn't it, to understand. <laughs> and, and how, like, people like myself who, who, well, touch wood, you know, I'm very lucky, I don't suffer with any condition, but it's really good to understand how we can help people who, when you have an epileptic seizure and things like this, Yes. Mm. And and that's um, uh, is, sorry. Go on, Fred. Go on, Fred. It is it is important always to to tell people or to teach someone about the first aid basics. Like myself, whenever I go, the first thing I tell someone I have epilepsy because mm. I can have a fit somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it is important mm. to accept first. Mm. Mm. And what type of epilepsy do you have? I have focal. I have focal. The one thing in the UK that people still don't understand is that there are 43 or thereabouts types of seizure. Is wow. that the, is, is so, that yeah. yeah is is that the the same in Kenya people just don't understand how many different forms that epilepsy can take. Uh, at least in, in in Britain I think your healthcare system is a bit better. Here there are some people who who even just have a seizure and when they go to the doctor instead of the doctor diagnosing putting putting maybe someone in for EEG or for MRI they just give you the phenomenal battles you know that one you're oh. not even helping you're not even helping your patient to see what type of seizure he has oh so, okay um, okay yeah 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 I, I can generally say here we have a lot of misconceptions and uh, even the doctors they are we we only have ten we only have ten epidologists in Kenya. Well, yes, that's quite limiting. Yeah, yeah. And yes. do the for the drugs itself, um, are they expensive or are they handed out? Uh, the drugs are mm -hmm. very expensive mm. because uh, these drugs you, you have to take them day to day, day day to day. Mm. So and in Kenya more than three quarters of the people earn less than a dollar. So you could wow. imagine, a lot of people don't even have access to eating, leave alone taking the meds. Yes. We've got um, not a question, but we've got, you oh. can see the questions on there. If you want to tell people that you'll see the questions. We've got Ali saying hello so far. Oh, okay, I'm going to put my glasses on. Right, we have <laughs> Ali actually saying just hello for, for, the mo for the meantime. So Ali, if you do have a question, yes, please feel free yeah. to Send join it in. in. That would be yeah. lovely. That's mm. perfect, thank you. Where's he from? Don't know. <laughs> America. Anyway, anyway, out of interest, let's go back. So, yes, we were talking about, weren't we? Uh, yeah, the cost. It's very difficult in Kenya. So, really, it's, it's to an elite group of people. So, that's not fair, is it? To a lot of the people. Yeah, it, it, it is very unfair. And it is, that, it is the main reason why I decided to help and start my organization. Because you will find that a lot of people, even eating becomes a problem, or even accessing that basic drug. Because mm. if someone with epilepsy doesn't have drugs, his chances of survival surely are so minimal. Yes. But what I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, I knew you were going to say something that you heard, but I like oh, to oh, interrupt. Oh, wait. I like wait. to interrupt. But what, what I'd like to, somebody who, who, if I see anybody having an, an epileptic fit or a seizure, um, what would be best for the general public? What can you advise us to do to help you? I would, okay. yourself. I would say uh, the okay. first thing that you should do is number one, you should where he has fallen down. You, you might. It is important first to to pick something that is dangerous away from him. You know, uh, maybe he might mm, fall mm. from uh, from water, or maybe he's fallen down and there there is dangerous stuff away like stones. Mm. So it is important to remove him. And uh, also, you can be able to unloosen his clothes. Yeah. Okay. yeah, just to make them feel safe. Yeah, the yep. yeah so that he can start breathing. Mm. 
Mm. Mm. Lovely. Then the next thing, you can put him in a recovery position. I belong to um, the West London branch of Epilepsy Action, which is a okay. charity that covers the whole of the UK. Um, okay. Your uh, society uh, has how many members? Is it the same sort of thing? Does it um, affiliate to a, a national charity? Uh, my organization has over 200 members. We have in Kenya, I think at the moment we have like 10, 10 organizations that deal with uh, okay. epilepsy. Okay. But we have, we have the, 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 the board that is called the National Epilepsy Coordination Committee. And my organization is a part of them, okay. of the committee. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to ask anything about the, um, I mean, are we, are we similar in the way that our branch and your society mm -hmm. works? If you want to ask me any questions about that, just go ahead. Yeah. So I, I could ask you, so how, 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 how expensive are your drugs? Okay, um, I don't know because we're lucky in that the NHS actually provides them mm. to us. So we're very different in that, that respect. For free. For free, For yeah. free yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, in our country, the, the National Hospital Insurance doesn't cover epilepsy. So people with epilepsy really have a long way to go, and uh, it's, it, it is very, very sad. It's a big challenge then, isn't it, to yeah. live with epilepsy if you don't have the money to buy the, the drugs, really? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is, it is a very, Not very big challenge, especially uh, if the first thing, the, the first problem we have here is your family. If your family doesn't accept you, yeah. you'll, you'll be able to really have a big hard life. Like uh, two months ago, we had a lady that had epilepsy and she was raped by more than five people. And uh, it, is even, it is even in my website, you can see it. We, we took her to hospital for more than two weeks and her family members never came to see her. Oh, that's came. sad. So, yeah. so really the question, yeah, the question is, it's all about down to educating people. But yeah. then again, the governments, even in, in England, I think we're, we're better here, but to educate through the schools and the young people so they can learn and pass it through to the generations. But that's a big step. Yeah. Do you, does your government have any campaigns on the go? Uh, I think uh, our government has not done a lot uh, about non-communicable disease because uh, if uh, if they they could have really steered ahead this education yeah. about epilepsy, going to schools, teaching the small boys about epilepsy, even yeah. when the boys are getting old, they will mm. know what is epilepsy and how to cope with someone who has epilepsy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because actually, for, uh, from somebody like me, as uh, Julie mentioned earlier, there were 42 different types of epilepsy, but I've read that they're equally then grouped into seven categories, which I didn't know. I just assumed yes. it was just, you just, it was just from one part of the brain. Mm. Um, so some uh, can be quite severe and, and some can be quite very mild. Yeah, yeah, some you know Which because of the forty-two types, some can be you can even be like blinking like this, and you are having. Mm. A yeah, that's yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah. So there, are, there are different types. There are different types, and each day, the, uh, each day, research is being done on how to to handle best someone who has epilepsy. Yeah. But Julie, you're the organisation that you chair in Ealing. Let's go back to you. How many people in that group that do you have? We have up to. 40 people in the group and that's just one branch yes, well yeah. i think there are probably like yourself mm. we have actually um maybe 150 members i don't know because i'm not um in charge of membership mm. but when we come to a meeting and that's once a month um it's about 40 people how often does your society meet we we do meet once in a month okay we do meet once in so similar we then. Deliberate on our issues and see if uh, because we, we live we live nearby. We live nearby. Okay. It's not very far. To have meetings and uh, to try to encourage one another to see maybe what we can do best as an as an organization and also to give hope to the members who have epilepsy. And can I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, do 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 people with epilepsy in your place uh, like have jobs? Yes. Mm. Yes. Um, if they can. I mean, there are people with severe epilepsy mm. who yes. can't work. But a lot of people um, just yes. go about their business, as other people do. Yeah. 
So um, they can't be fired even if they have a season maybe in the office? Sorry, so could you repeat that? They can't be fired even if they have uh, a absolute, season in the office? No, absolutely no. not. No. Well, no. I can say here in my country, uh, a lot of people who have epilepsy, if maybe a company knows that you have epilepsy and let's say you have a season, direct, you are going home. Mm. So going home and not coming that, back? Is that what you mean? Going home yes, all over? Yes. Actually, they will be fine because they don't want to take the blame or they would say, mostly people with epilepsy, they, have, they really have a hard life. From yeah, being, it sounds like it. Fired. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then I guess it can go, and you mentioned depression, or you did, Fred, didn't you? Like depression. Yeah. It can become a loss of self esteem, isn't it? Anxiety. The more you do it, yes. Sir. And how you're perceived in, in the public. But it's up to a person with epilepsy, I guess, if you, can, if you get the drugs, it, it is controllable, isn't it? And if, if they for work, some people, for yeah. some. For some, do they, they do work, and then that maybe they can start rebuilding their life. Yes, like myself, uh, like myself. After after now, I started taking the medicine. I I, I, I I live a comfortable life. I have a wife, but before before I, I accept because you can be taking the meds that you have not accepted. You know, accepted is the first healing process. Of yes, course, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That's very important. Yes. We had um, a speaker at the last branch meeting who was talking about um, his company's attitude towards him having a seizure. And if he has a seizure, they send him home and insist that he has three days off to relax and then he goes back to work. I think companies are becoming a little bit more switched on to the fact that, um, to the idea that people need to rest, but they're absolutely productive really productive or as productive as the next person i think if somebody who has epilepsy in kenya if he comes to uk he'll say he's coming to heaven because uh, in kenya there are I, maybe like maybe five companies or maybe three because the rest they'll just fire you home mm. Mm. yeah that's a little bit sad isn't it <laughs> But I would imagine your foundation, Fred, and, and your support group that you run, yeah. Julia, is very good for people with epilepsy to just come forward and maybe feel safe um, so they can help move, move on in the right direction if they're not certain. It's pos particularly if they're first, after their first seizure, I would imagine, is, is the worst, mm. isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Yeah, that is very true. After their first seizure, it becomes stressful and... What we do as an, as, as an organization, we do a lot of counseling to, to our members to, to our members, and try to, to tell them that, hey, I know you have epilepsy, but you can have a good life. Good, and again, yeah. What yeah. Do, and again, what we do, we, try, we also empower our members by teaching them basic skills. Like, you know, if now you have epilepsy, you cannot drive. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, of course, so, yeah. So what That's you do, what you do, we try to teach them on how, on how best to do a, a positive life. Mm. And how about in your place? Um, in the support group, I think that's what people find most strength, the, the biggest strength, that they can all chat to each other and uh, it's the first time that they've met a whole bunch of people who have the same problem as themselves. And yes, we do swap information, like the driving that you were just talking about. And, um, and you know, people talk about drugs and that sort of thing. But of course, what works for one person doesn't work for the next person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is very, very it's like every, everything, isn't mm. it? With yeah, any condition as mm. well. Mm. But I think. So, uh, and, and in, uh, uh, what is the number of the people who have epilepsy in Britain? Uh, it's one in a hundred people. Uh, that's uh, what, yeah. Yes, in yeah. Kenya, there's more than 1.2 million people who suffer from epilepsy. And only 20% of us can access the anti-epileptic drugs. So, which means we are 200,000. The rest of the 800,000... I just have to work it out, really, or... And that can be dangerous then, can't it, surely, yeah. if you don't have the drugs? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Eventually, I mean, and is there a progression? Would they get worse if they're not controlled with the drug? I, I, I'm what do not, you think? 
I'm not sure that they actually get mm. worse. I don't. No. I'm not sure about that. But it's just no chance there yes, to to yeah. be controlled. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Awful. you know, once, uh, once you live, once you are, you are living in that state, you know, you are in this, this state of despair because number one, nobody cares about you. The family members don't care. You don't have money to go to the hospital, so you are just living a, a day at a time. Mm. When your time comes to die, you die. When you, you don't, <laughs> you just live a day at a time. So it's must, very, yeah. I can say that it is very sad. It is very, very sad here in Kenya, and. Uh, uh, but I, 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 I thank God because we are progressing. As the day goes by, we are, we are getting other organizations yeah, to come to join us to fight this fight. Fabulous. Mm. What That's about ch what about children's attitude mm. to mm. Um, epilepsy? What do you know, young people who perhaps haven't seen or haven't really understood? Obviously, they wouldn't have understood when they're very little. What do they think? Uh, I have, I, I have one of our members who, who is a child and. Uh, she has epilepsy. When uh, she had epilepsy, all the people in her class never came to sit with her. Oh, because, yeah. Because they were told that if you have epilepsy, it is con it is con Oh, yeah. No. Mm. Mm. That's terrible, isn't it? And yet, children can be the most accepting. Of, or the most of, cruel. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. there is that. There is that as you well. Know. Yeah, yes, yeah. From yeah. Yes, from yeah. both. I have two children. And yes. um, from a very, very, very young age, they saw me having okay. seizures. Mm. They saw me having seizures. Now okay. they're twenty-seven and twenty-nine, and okay. for them, it's just not a big deal. It really isn't. That's true. Yeah, That's true. because they've seen them, seen it growing as they grew up, and you know. They, they'll talk to anybody. They'll say, oh, my mum has epilepsy. Mm. They're not at all bothered. Well, they, they care, but they're not bothered about, they don't have the stigma, don't carry the stigma no. that other people do. So I think it would be yes. very important here to get to young people. Do, yes. is, do you feel the same? Yes, I feel the same. That is why my organisation is really focused a lot on with, the, with the young kids. Because what we do, we go to schools and focus on the young children and teach mm. them about epilepsy. We had a case. We had a case whereby we went to, to another school, and one one of one of the schools, one of one of a, one of the parents never told the, never told the, the daughter that the brother has epilepsy. So oh. when we went to the school and taught about epilepsy, the the causes, the triggers, and the symptoms. So the girl in the evening told the father, "You never told me my brother has epilepsy." <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing, really. It well, just, it's I, just, I just think, yeah, yeah you it's know. It's just, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Sometimes it seems a bit of a lost cause, doesn't it? You know, trying to mm. stamp out the stigma. But I don't mm. think it is a lost cause. You've just got no. to keep trying. <laughs> I think with anything, I mean, autism or so, and, uh, people with diabetes, it's similar. Mm. Yes, yes. And yourself, uh, do you cook in the house and are you allowed to, like, drive? Not allowed to drive mm. until, oh, I can't remember now, is it I, uh, yeah, I two, did, well, two, I did years. two years free, years, okay. completely mm. two years. I did yeah. read one story uh, of, of one young lady in England who didn't drive for one year, but after a year she was allowed to drive. Yeah. And she had children. So what, she, is the threshold? what is the threshold for you to drive? You have to be free of seizures. Um, if it's night, if you only have nighttime seizures, I believe that's a year. Mm. But um, if it's daytime seizures, two years. But yes, I cook in the house. Uh, yeah, as far as cooking and, uh, is concerned. Sorry. And how do how do like the government and the epilepsy organisation check in balance? Because there are some people maybe they can have epilepsy and they still want to drain. Oh do, yeah. Is there anything that maybe is there any coordination like in our country we don't have that. Um, there have been stories in the press yes. where people um, have had accidents because they drove too yeah. quickly. Mm. Yeah, but there's it's difficult to get to, to have those checks and balances in place if somebody is uh, adamant that they haven't had a seizure for two years. I mean, how's going? How are you going to prove that they have? True. Yeah. And. Uh, our teacher, can you please tell us how how how, how do you think uh, epilepsy is? How, what what have you seen so far in your teaching career? 
It might. Uh, no, we've, I've just known of two children ever in my whole career to have had epilepsy, but it was. I don't know. We weren't told which type of epilepsy, but we mm. were just given basic instructions on what to do and to help them. And actually, it was just to put them into a recovery, make sure they were comfortable, safe, which is what you've mentioned mm. before, a quiet place. Um, and just let them, just stay with them and let them recover. And, and eventually they would return to normal, their breathing. Wow. It was as if they almost just went away for a short moment and then and just gradually came back to us. Yeah. But yes. we were never told that it wasn't severe enough uh, to go and run and think, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, what's happening? <laughs> you know, because a lot of people out there in the public, if it was in the street, they probably actually would just call an ambulance. Actually, one of the, good. one of the members, sorry to interrupt, mm. one of the members of our branch is a teacher and she has epilepsy. Oh, mm. Yeah, but her, the, the pupils in her class yes. sort of know what to do. They're not, you know, again, it's, mm. not, it's not a big deal. And she's a PE mm. teacher. Mm. I have a friend of mine who has epilepsy and uh, he's an insurance broker. So there, there was a time that he had a very bad fit in town. Can you imagine when he fell down, he stole his mobile phone and his Ooh. money. That's awful, isn't it? That's, yeah. That's, yeah. There are a lot of comments we could make sad. about that, but we won't. <laughs> yeah. It is very sad. Okay. Until, until he had to quit that job and started another job. Because he said, I can die in town. <laughs> Okay, actually, on, on that note, we're going to really start to just bring this to a close now. Yeah. But, um, it's, I, th I think it's been quite very useful for me to listen to both yeah. of you. It's yeah. very interesting. Yes. And I, I really think even in England, it needs to be have more publicity. Oh, yes. Advertising on the totally television. Totally agree with that. Definitely. Yeah. With all these disabilities or conditions. And I wish you luck. Mm. Very, you know, the very best of luck with your society. I think it sounds like you're doing a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fred. Joining us. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye. I, I, also, I, also, I also wish to invite you to my organization. You can come to volunteer. Good, we will. See, yeah, uh, that, that'll be nice. Yeah. We should. Yes, yeah. we should. One day, hopefully. Yes. All the best. Yes. Take care. Thank you very yes. much, Thank Fred. You. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm from Africa. I'm from Africa. I'm from Africa. I'm from Africa. And I'm a superstar. I'm from Africa. I'm from Africa. I'm from Africa. And I'm a superstar. I'm from Africa. I'm from Africa. I'm from Africa.